Carol to Mrs. Sutters. Thank you. We recently debated in the Chamber the Council's move to develop a small number of bigger, brighter clubs, youth clubs across the borough, a strategy developed after wide consultation with stakeholders starting in 2007. We're now exploring the effect reorganisation might have on our smaller clubs and voluntary organisations, which appears to be the main thrust of the debate tonight. So let me say firstly, I place great store by the contribution made by our youth workers and by our voluntary organisations. I fully endorse what Councillor Humphreys has said in his speech, and I'm really delighted to hear that we have pledged help to all those affected by the cuts in funding to find alternative support that will help ensure we can continue their valuable work. As you'd all expect, I'm working hard with my ward colleagues to ensure that the solution is fine for Ashburton, and I know many of you are doing the same in your wards. But in preparing for tonight, I took some time to reflect on the reasons given by the opposition party for the restaurant up amendment we have before us, which seems to have been prompted in part by the recent deputations received at the OSC meeting, and that mainly concentrated on youth services. The Labour group cite the Kingham report. When I looked at it again, it reports that Wandsworth has consistently had one of the highest levels of investment in youth services. It notes that in 2010-11, analysis from the DFES ranked Wandsworth as the seventh highest borough for expenditure per capita in London on services for young people, even excluding the numerous community, face-based and uniform groups we are also working with in the borough. However, as every good conservative knows, it is also wisely cautions that high levels of per capita expenditure alone are not always a good indicator of cost effectiveness. Finally, it goes on to say that Wandsworth had a relatively low level of needs at around 4.5%, putting us amongst the top 20 authorities nationwide. And I think we should remember all this and be proud of it. And so I thought our figures stack up. So I moved to the recommendations to see why you thought that this was a reason to, to take the action you have. And the only area I really found, apart from, as Councillor Gibbons said, the family recovery project, which we are working on, was the re to reduce the influence of gangs. Surely that's a priority for us all. And the justification for our decision to extend and improve detached work for young people at risk of disengagement, which is at the heart of our early intervention programme. Maybe I've missed something. But a call for re-evaluation of the way we're doing things was definitely not in the Kingham report. I then moved further to read some of your other paragraphs, and I got quite excited by the idea of cooperative youth and children's services model. So I also went to the Lambeth website to learn how it was done. It was described as a collaboration between different stakeholders and defined in four strands thus. Number one, localism engagement and involvement of local communities. And I thought, well, great, we can tick that box, no problem. Co-production, so that local communities and stakeholders are involved in deciding what and how service should be delivered. It's a fantastic word, co-production, but again, I felt that was what we were doing. I didn't see any problem with that. Three, developing cooperative models for service delivery that include mutuals, lead partner organizations, friends of groups. Leaving aside mutuals, only because I haven't got any knowledge of any of those in Wandsworth, though, though perhaps York Road Library might, might tick that box, I felt that many of our services were achieving just that. And finally, community commissioning. Local people deciding which services should be commissioned to support young people. And at that point, I came back all the way to the beginning of my speech. We asked, and they told us, they wanted bigger, brighter centres, and that is what we're developing. And so, whilst I'm always open to constructive ideas for improving the council's office to our communities, I find myself questioning what more could be achieved if we did reconsider the recommendations and enter into a further round of discussions and research as Labour's request. Sadly, and I think you all know what I'm going to say, I can't find any as the decisions taken are already reflective of a great deal of officer engagement, past consultation, and community involvement. Thank you. And I'm sorry, everybody, my hearing aids are playing up, so I'm quite to come over.
Um, I'm now going to call on uh, Councillor Speck, and I have agreed a request that Councillor Speck be allowed to address the Council for 10 minutes on this paragraph. Councillor Speck. Thank you. Madam Mayor, it is a very serious situation that we're discussing, and it affects a lot of people. The papers 11, 791, 792, 796 are concerned with lots of changes in the provision of various children's services, including um, early years provision, after school facilities, one o'clock clubs, youth work. And I want to look at how these changes are affecting our community in the long term. After the riots in the summer and from the recommendations of King, the Kingham Report, which uh, uh, Councillor Gibbons has referred to as well, citing some of the examples, so I won't go into it, we should be looking now at how we engage young people in our local communities to ensure that this doesn't happen again. And we should also look at how we care for our children from early years upwards, including in after-school provision, especially in the most deprived areas of the borough, which again seem to be the ones that are hit uh, with, with what we can see now. And we did have various deputations at the Children's uh, Services OSC, there was Generate, there was the Islamic Youths Group, there were professional staff who were working with young people, as well as the ones with uh, Against Cups Group. We had a letter from Providence House Group, we had a packed room, and we had a long meeting. And they all explained, they were all very eloquent, and they all explained the work they do and the impact that reducing and cutting grants would have on the young people in the area. Most of these facilities are being cut, as I say, in the most deprived areas like Latchmere and Roehampton. So I am not going to try to take all 10 minutes, you'll be pleased to know, but I'll take a couple of instances. The Islamic Youth Group, and they've sent us all a very excellent letter to remind us of why this facility was needed in the first place. It is an example of a successful uh, youth provision with social cohesion and it also plays, uh, plays a real vi really vital role in getting Muslim young women involved. Several of the youngsters came along, including girls. And the letters they've sent us showed us that actually they have good attendance, especially for girls, uh, which we often don't see in many of our uh, youth clubs. And yet less resources are provided there by the council than many other clubs. So actually it sounds like good value to me that we're getting a lot for very little and it's something that we should be looking to keep. And the equality impact assessment here alone does not show the full impact of what would happen if the facility could not continue and, and the problems that were there before it was. But the other deputations also gave many examples of why their work is important and the impact of closing their facilities and what they would have on the, uh, on the community. We heard from the professional staff about the fact that even if voluntary groups take on some of the work, and we do have you know, volunteers coming here, but we still, if I remember rightly, have less volunteers in Wandsworth than most other places in the country, according to voluntary groups' uh, figures. Um, they still need professional support and training and help. And the staff wanted to show us how they can provide that and, looking, and even they were looking at different ways of working and mentioned uh, mutuals themselves. So there were some really good deputations about uh, crucial areas with our young people. What do local people in the area say? I actually spoke to a number of people in the Battersea area on Saturday to find out what they thought and I could give lots of examples but I'll just mention two. One concerning youth clubs and one regarding early years provision. The first person was appalled about what was going to happen to Providence House. She'd attended the youth club when a teenager. Her children had attended since. And she spoke of when, well before my time, there were far more facilities in the area, but now there were very few. She didn't know where the youngsters would go um, if these were declining. She didn't want them to go a long way. She was worried about problems with gangs and territories, and she didn't want her children to be involved in that. And it strikes me as odd sometimes. We've heard lots of arguments about needing neighbourhood schools near where the kids live. 
We don't might seem to mind them going miles away, a long way from where they live in the dark at night. You are not very consistent. A second person I, sp uh, I spoke to um, works in the area of affordable childcare. She was also very worried. She was worried about the effect of reducing grants to various facilities. She actually worked in, 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 in one of them and she said, well, if, we, if grants go down and we have to um, have more price, prices going up, less people to use them, um, then they wouldn't be able to go out to work. She was also, and it was her, not me, I didn't prompt her honestly, also said, well, if, if the provision closed and she lost her job, she was also worried that as a council tenant, she could lose her home too because there wouldn't be anywhere else to work. So we've got lots of examples, and we talk, I talk with many people. Next we have the after-school clubs being closed, like the Doddington Ac um, Activity Centre. And it was said that others could take the slack. I think Catch-22 was mentioned, I believe Chesterton School was mentioned, as you know, was another provision nearby. But I actually know that they're struggling with maintaining staff for the facility they've got, and it might not always be there. I think we've got to look at it again. I think offices have done, on all the different bits of the paper, they did quality impact assessments on the different changes. But several areas of concern didn't have a right, the tick box that matched. You know, there was lots of things that tick boxes don't cover. Um, and also, I think we do need to do a cumulative equality impact assessment because it's everything on top of each other. One might be all right, then another one over there might be all right. But when you get three or four, it gets bad. As I explained above, I believe it's important to recognise if we want safe communities and more involved young people, we must look at what happened in the summer. We must look at the recommendations that we've had in regard to local communities being involved and how we can help. I know that the general strategy from the Children's Services OSC has been the five bright hubs for youth clubs around the borough. And that the, at that time, because as I understand it, the consultation that was quite some time ago, might fit the requirements of some of our young people. But in the light of recent events, they do not fit for the communities in our most deprived areas. So we need to look at how we can continue to supply high quality services um, and look at all the options available to us. Because I don't think we are. I think it, it's an easy option what we're doing, you know, um, without looking at the bigger picture. There are lots of things I could argue about in the report, but I'm concentrating on how we can save some of those most vital facilities. I know that the OSC in the report recommends various cuts of funding, which comes to you know, a few million pounds in total, but we do need to sit, think outside the box and involve the local community to see how we can save those services. I don't think we need a top-down model or a model where those who find it the easiest to write reports and proposals get extra money, because lots of people are really good at that. They get lots of money, and those that aren't very good at rewriting reports don't get any. So I think we've got to be a bit shrewd than that and look at it. As a matter of urgency, we should set up a commission to look at alternative ways of providing the necessary services, and I'd be quite happy to work on that. Various things are being done around the country, different ways of working. It could be cooperative services. It could be some of the groups together Becoming a cooperative, it could, there's lots of ways. It could be that the little clubs are spokes of the big hub. Um, I don't know all the answers, and it would be a challenge. And I'm sure once we shouldn't be scared of a challenge. Uh, let's make it a better place after the riots and work together for our communities. And I would urge everybody to support the amendment so that we can work to sit together to see how we can protect those facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Speck. Councillor Tracy? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, an interesting debate, and I have to say um, it really does highlight the philosophical differences between the two parties. And um, if I may, I'll just explain why I make that statement. Um, I'm not going to stand here and um, uh, answer Councillor Carpenter's um, questions about cuts in teenage pregnancy or children in care and what have you because I believe that those are all um, safe cuts and are there because of um, very good preventative work that is going on which means that the actual money that's being spent can be reduced. But the arguments over um, after school care and the youth service 
um, and the Kingham report are interesting. I would argue, and um, I hope my colleagues on this side would agree, I'm absolutely sure my colleagues on the other wouldn't, but I've been doing this job for some time now, um, and I feel very strongly that the extra support that we have been given, giving, particularly to the youth service, has actually acted against what uh, Councillor Speck said we all have a duty to do, and I think she said it was in the Kingham report, um, was to um, bring the, uh, engage with the young people to bring them more into our community. And actually, if the um, organisations that are working with our young people actually had to engage a bit more with the community and had to actually fundraise and prove their worth within the community, I believe that that would add to an engagement, as it has proven, um, and I know we keep quoting the Lennox, and we, we're going to have to stop doing that and get another one. But, I mean, it is an interesting one that on the Lennox they have managed to actually decide that as a community they do want to support, not what we were offering, something different, but they do want to support a facility there which they will be funding. Um, I, I'm surprised that the three organisations that we're talking about on cutting back in these papers haven't objected to our constantly quoting the Kingham Report as far as they are concerned, because these are three extremely good organisations, and I don't for a moment believe that any of the youngsters that uh, attend um, either Providence, Islamic, or Generate um, were in any way involved, nor would they ever be in the riots. And that is the other dilemma that I have. These are particularly good, well-run, voluntary organisations, although they're not, strictly speaking, voluntary organisations because they've been funded by the council. Used to be funded else differently, but they're now predominantly funded by the council. I need to target my resources, and they are reducing resources, but I do need to target my resources on truly targeted preventative care. Those youngsters that did take uh, part in the riots, that aren't attending our youth clubs, whether they be the five bigger, brighter ones, or whether they be the smaller ones that um, so many of our youngsters enjoy. I feel that is my duty, and I think that is the duty of this council, to actually be funding um, help, um, assistance, and um, giving a resource to those youngsters that actually don't seem to have a voice anywhere. They don't seem to realize that if they did attend some of our facilities, an awful lot of doors would be open to them and we would be able to help them. But they are disengaged, and my duty is to use the limited resources I have to see how I can engage those to the best possible um, advantage to this borough and to our community. The matter now before the Council is a reference up amendment proposed by Councillor Speck and seconded by Councillor Gibbons in respect of the paragraph 6 of the Executive Report concerning service changes in children's services. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Twelve. Twelve. Those against the motion? Forty-one against. Anyone abstaining? The motion is therefore lost. Is the report received? Is the report therefore received for information? Okay.